Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you're doing good today on this Thursday morning, halfway through December. Isn't that insane? It's just crazy how fast time is going. So let me just jump into this because we do have a special guest today, so I can go through my normal disclaimers and all that stuff. But first, welcome to Break the Cycle with DSD. I am your host, Dwayne. I am not a therapist, nor am I an attorney. I'm an individual, much like you, who's gone through a tough time and developed some ways to deal with it that I share with you to help you get your life back. And uh, if you have kids, to help you strengthen your relationship with your kids. Remember, throwing terms around like narcissist, narcissist and NPD and BPD and personality disorder, only a licensed professional in a clinical environment can diagnose somebody with a personality disorder. So leave that to the professionals. Of course, learn what you're dealing with because, you know, if you highly suspect that somebody has an issue, there are, there are proven ways that you can deal with this in a positive way to help you uh, get your life back. So, But be careful because when you start going around saying, my ex is a NPD or a borderline and she's basically or he's basically crazy, it makes you look crazy and undermines your credibility. Just don't do that. If you like what's going on here and you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member. You can do that by going over to youtube.com slash dad's thriving divorce, looking for the join button. And when you do for the different tiers, the lowest tiers, two bucks, come on. You get special badges, custom emojis, your name listed in credits, access to member only events and member only access to the member only discord area. And there is a big area of the whoops of the discord that is public. So it's not just a, a gatekeep thing. If uh, you want to get notified when the show goes live, just text DSD Live to 844-598-0012, 844-598-0012, and you will get an SMS notification with the show link directly to your phone so you don't miss a thing. And I am since I have a guest today, I am not going to have the phone lines open. Actually, I didn't because I thought video wasn't going to work, but we actually made it work. But today I have with me uh, Mr. Caleb Leverett who most of you probably have heard of, uh, and we're going to talk about how things get, or how you get your life back on this, and I think he's a good example of that. So let's just dive into that, and let me make sure all my button's working. Caleb, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. I'm on my boat, and I'm living <laughs> living the happiest life I know how to live. I tell you, man, I've been, I've been watching you for... Jesus, what has it been? Three years, I think, right? right. That's whenever I found your story. And even at that point, your story was three years old. And I just want to say, man, seeing the transformation of you, of all the stuff that you've been through, and to see that smile on your face and see you living your dream is, is incredible. I think in some ways, I'm, I'm living vicariously through you. So I just, I love seeing it. Can, can you can you let me see if I can do this? I'm gonna make you big. Can you just get uh, give us a little view of where you're at? Just kind of because you, you guys, if you don't know, and I'll show some pictures here in a minute. He just recently bought a boat, fixed it up, and just put it in the water a few days ago. So literally, we're at the beginning stages of a guy who is finally, you know, not out of the clutches of family court. Because how do you ever get out of that, dude? That is amazing. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a reverse. The, the steering wheel's on reverse. Compared to most of it. That yeah. eliminates a lot of uh, cables or all the cables and pulleys. And then up here is my bow pulpit. Not amazing. And I love this. Some of the pictures, for some of the pictures I've posted, my boat, to, to me, it looks gigantic, but it's really not. It's so tiny. Like it takes me four or five steps, and here I am all the way at the back again. <laughs> that is outstanding and i would show you the inside but it is an utter mess because i've got more stuff than i have places to put stuff so no I'll, worries I'll, well your viewers off by showing you the inside let me plug you in real quick because i don't know how long my battery oh yeah last if I well and while you're doing while you're doing that what i can do is uh let me do this over here, this is some pictures of uh, when Caleb was get. It. He bought his boat and he had to fix it up. And I got these are pictures. This is this is a photograph of his uh, what's he's currently on. 
This is whenever he was finishing up. Actually, I think this photograph, and, and, and to be clear, I, I just raided your Facebook page and uh, your YouTube community page and uh, <laughs> grabbed some shots. So, and, and just so everybody knows, just to be clear, we tested this configuration yesterday and it didn't work. There was no audio. So I really thought that this was going to be a phone interview and uh, we just for shits and shoots and grins, whatever, darn the luck. Um, we tried it one more time this morning and everything was working. But uh, so, so how, I tell you what, let's just, let me ask you this. How big, how long is that boat? How big is it? It is called a Bayfield. It's a 1985 model, 29 feet. And that, so I'm told, does not include the actual bow pulpit at the front. It's just the end of the boat. Does that mean so like have, it would be, would it be similar to like a 29 foot RV or probably small? I guess probably smaller, right? Because. Um, well, and feet wise, it's the same, but interior, it's probably a little bit, it's smaller because I've got the cockpit, which is where my steering wheel is. That's going to take up six or eight feet. And then the very right, front okay. of the boat gets more narrow. And it's more like just for, they call it a locker. It's a, for storage. So okay. The interior, the living and being protected by the elements of the sea is, it's small. It's I, 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 I relate it to a, an efficiency apartment for college people. Hey, that doesn't sound too bad. And then you got the best views in the world, right? <laughs> I do. And that compensates for the tiny size that it is. I, I wake up and my front backyards are gorgeous. And I have coffee with my dolphin buddies. And as of yesterday, or maybe day before, yeah, yesterday, I think, I finally saw my first manatees. Nice. I'm just going through another that, shot. This is another shot. I think you're just enjoying a sunset on the, on the, on the, shot, I had just been on the water about an hour and a half and the sun was going down <laughs> and I wanted to get a shot of just, just for record's sake. <clears throat> and the reason my shirt is so filthy <laughs> is soon as they dropped my boat into the, the loading slip, my, I've got a little too small, two cylinder diesel engine that I'd only just briefly started while it was on the hard because you can't run them very long out of the water, obviously, or they'll burn up. But I had fuel delivery problems and I, I had my, 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 my old salt buddy, uh, Fred there on the hard, he was helping me, uh, hand me tools. And I was down on the engine, pulling the cover off and bleeding <laughs> the fuel. He's pushing buttons. Okay. All right, start now. All right. Now try throttle. Now try reverse. And by then I'm sweating like a stuck pig and I just wanted to have a shot before the sun went down <laughs> because at that point I still hadn't anchored yet. And I hadn't, I've only anchored like professionally in my, my sailing class, which was two months ago or two and a half months ago. And it only lasted a week and I was about to have to do it all in the dark. And so oh, no. there wasn't any time for cosmetics and changing clothes and getting a nice warm shower. Cause that doesn't exist on a tiny <laughs> boat. I was just thinking, man, is, it, it, are your cheeks hurting yet from smiling? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. They are. <laughs> you know, I, I think, um, you know, one of the things that's, that's amazing, and, and, I, and I know this is, we're, we're pretty upbeat now, but I, I'm, ex guys, I'm excited, right? I mean, you know, I know for me, whenever I started my, my harrowing experience, it felt like there was no hope, you know? It feels like your life's over because, well, technically your life from the day before a, a toxic situation happens, it pretty much is. But I think a lot of people get into this mode where you just think that, that nothing's ever going to get better. And, and to see, I, I was going to say the other day we were talking, well, maybe it was a few months ago and you were talking about the boat thing. And then with all the stuff that's going on, you're just like, man, I don't know if this, I'll ever be able to do it. You're even talking about backup plans. I remember you were saying, well, maybe I'll do an RV, you know, I mean, you know, they, because of the system, you can't get like your passport and stuff, but you know, you could at least drive around the United States or something. And for, for, let me ask you this. Did you think this boat thing was going to happen? Pretty much not until it actually did. I had these dreams of what it was going to be like. Yeah. And without sounding perverted, because I'm, I'm not trying to, but it's kind of like trying to explain sex to a virgin. You just can't yeah. explain it other than the physical what it is but what it's like until you actually do it. it it didn't turn out like i thought it was going to but it 
turned into something more beautiful. The, the whole act of selling and or mostly giving away so much of the stuff I've moved, I don't know, 20 or 30 times in my adult life. The act of getting rid of all of that stuff that just flat won't fit on a little boat and actually getting on the boat, it was surreal. It, it, <laughs> it, I didn't know what to expect. I really thought I was going to be able to, hopefully, hoping I was going to be able to fit a lot more stuff on here. <laughs> Literally like going through my tools and I'm like almost in tears. What do I get rid of? And what do I keep? I got to have some because that's the only thing I know. But I bought this tool in 1997 (laughs) when I got married and I bought this tool and I don't. And then I get to the, the, the kids collectibles and they're crap that I've been hauling around for years. And it's all simple to me because I know what all of it is, but in reality, some of it is it's just junk and i have to re- and i the way I, I consoled myself is i i said boys london here's all the stuff i've hauled it around for all these years take whatever you want i've done my duty and i <laughs> simply this old mule can't haul this stuff anymore i'm going to keep you know a few things i've got london's well i hate to do this on the fly but i'm just going to do it because i'm so proud to have kept this little thing this was London's Aww. when she was a baby. And Hayden, my son Hayden, the second oldest son, as I was packing through, he was the one. See, it's got little bunny ears. He was like, Dad, come on. You, you <laughs> got to keep this. This is London. Like, You're right. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. I. <laughs> I have uh, one of one of my viewers who's uh, also lived on a boat before. He had a question for you. Let me see if I can pull this up on the screen. Uh, I'll read it, though. It says, uh, after living on a narrow boat, even after years, I still only use 1% of my house and very disciplined about electricity, water, and toilet use. On land, we take so much for granted. Caleb, agree? Yeah, pretty much. You, you, I got into this routine once I... Uh, quit drinking. Uh, in fact, I quit drinking. It'll be four months on Monday. And before leading up to that, I decided I wanted to eat better. And I was like eating my vegetables. Every, everything was fresh, 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 very, very little out of a can. You get on a boat and it, if you want to stay out on the water as long as possible, I've, I've learned I've had to eat all the fresh vegetables first. And then you got to have backup because let's face it, spinach stuff. <laughs> Uh, fresh spinach doesn't last more than just a few days, especially since all I have is an ice box. If there's no ice in it, it doesn't stay oh, cold. Wow. It's, but I, I'll eventually have to get to put in some kind of what they call a cold plate to preserve fresh vegetables and fruits longer. But yeah, you've got to make sure you, you don't waste an ounce of water. You, you learn to brush your teeth more efficiently. You learn to wash your dishes more efficiently. You decide... Maybe I don't want to dirty up that extra dish by mixing up the eggs in a little stirring thing. I'll just crack them straight into the skillet. Oh, yeah. You get more efficient because that makes sense. I love that. Um, man, I just, you know, so I just, just so people know, I mean, in the off chance that people don't, uh, let me get my, my setup over here, that don't know who we're talking about or don't, don't understand I'm going to just bring this up on the screen real quick. So Caleb has a YouTube channel that just, oh yeah, congratulations. You just broke 400,000 subscribers, what, last night or something. Congratulations on that. <laughs> so, I, I mean, he documented a lot of his story um, on uh, on his, his, I mean, for, well, effectively, like, like the last 10, 11, 12 years. But you're you're basically pivoting your entire channel from a basically that type of family court activism. You're moving the whole thing to just basically sailing, right? I am. I am. There's back then that was my life. I was a pack mule. I worked. I showed up to get my kids. I put cameras in the faces of people who were trying to harm my children. And I just I wouldn't even say expose. I just wanted a real documentation of what really happened instead yeah. of a watered down version. But all that's changed. My kids are grown and it would be pointless for me to, you know, like hold on to the old days. That'd be like Al Bundy 
holding on the old football days and oh yeah he just yeah. got really pathetic because he was and then I, I didn't want to be that i don't that's not who i am i for contrary to what people might think about me and i was miserable for a long time back in those days i'm generally a happy person i, I yeah i like to smile and i like to crack south park type jokes particularly with my kids because it's we like to prank each other but they're grown and there's no such thing as the the system or anybody taking my children away from me there's no such thing as denying me access if there's any access to denied it's because they're either in their early 20s or late teens and that's just that age they're busy they're yeah. denying themselves and who am i to interfere with that i'm not going to Dear old dad will be around. Y'all got my phone number. Y'all call me anytime. In the meantime, dad's going to go play and go live and have fun, <laughs> enjoy this crazy world and possibly dying in the ocean. But that's okay. <laughs> well, that part, let's, <laughs> let's not do that, man. I have a, uh, another question from somebody, and, uh, and I always mess Maconia's name up. But it says, Caleb, what was the, hard, what was the one thing that was the worst slash darkest or most bleak or, and devastating during the darkest hours of, quote, this kind of hell where you couldn't see hope? And what was that that kept you from quitting? And I know you're not a quitter, but I mean, a lot of people in this really get to the point where they just, they, they just consider giving up. Uh, my second biggest video is called Parker versus the Man, and that was the darkest, darkest hour of my life. Yeah. When Parker ripped away from me, we really thought we Parker and I walked in. We really thought, man, the, we got on video. The police said we could go. I mean, yeah. you got on the stand, blah, blah, blah. And then for it to just be yanked and him moving, you know, 375 miles away. I didn't even know the address. I didn't know anything about where they were, what was going to happen. He'd already been gone for two and a half months for that summer that was the darkest that I went home and I don't recommend this, but this is what I did. It was stupid. But what I did is I went and that was the beginning of my true alcoholism. Yeah. I went home and yeah. hammered off my butt and I shouldn't have done it. I don't recommend it. I, I openly talk about this with people. That was the beginning of, I, I that was leading me down to the, road to the MGTOW people. I had a lot of oh, MGTOW yeah. people oh, yeah. out to me and it felt good because th I had a bunch of uh, like-minded fathers that were going through the same thing, you know, trying to raise me up. And I don't completely like crap on MGTOW. It's, I don't obviously agree with a lot of what they stand for, but they, there, there was a, a special place, I guess you could say, where at least I, I felt, you know, a comforting hand on my shoulder. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. We've been there too. It's just not a good place to stay. Oh, because, man. Oh, yeah. For the most part, the MGTOW guys, I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to be ugly and mean, but they're, they're, they're full of hate and hatred. And hatred is just going to breed more hatred. That was the lowest time in for about a year, I, I was about, I'll admit it, I was a misogynist, and I, the only female human being that I didn't hate was London. Yeah. I, 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 I was really, really bitter. And then the cool thing about that, though, is once you reach rock bottom, there are only two, one of two things going to happen. You're going to die, or you're going to pick you up by your bootstraps and slap yourself around a little bit and open your mind to this can and will get better if you just don't give up shortly thereafter i saw a video i don't know how it came across my feed but there's a sailor named louis van Prigg, and he's an australian guy and he's got a video called west sail 32 and a west sail 32 is a boat made in the late 70s early 80s and it's 32 feet it's considered a blue water uh, ocean goer it's small it's tiny but it's designed to take one to two people across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, you know, an ocean crosser versus just a puddle jumper. And when I saw that video, I was like, first of all, I was like, do people do that? Really? That gave me hope. <laughs> and I, from then on, I started watching all kinds of sailing videos. And that's when I decided I'm going to get through this. I don't know how, but I'm going to get through this and I'm going to do that. And as of Monday of this, uh, December 14th of this week, I finally did it. 
Now you're talking just to to backtrack. You're basically talking. How long? What that was? Uh, nine nine years ago? Or no, it was longer uh, now, right? That was, I was put in jail. I'm starting to lose track of time. It was either 2014 or 2015. So five years you had a, a well, five six 20, years ago, you had a vision of this. Now I had to go report back and do the remaining fifty six days after I'd exhausted everything I could to the the Texas Supreme Court. So six, we're going on seven years now. So you went from from dealing that blow, having to spend a little bit of time in jail, to having this idea that I'm going to buy a boat and I'm going to be able to sail to another country in my little boat. And now you're doing it, man. A lot of other countries, a whole lot of us, because in that, all this time I've made so many friends all over the world. Oh it's yeah. About modern technology. I love it. I want yeah, you have, to... you definitely have a global audience. And when I just, I know we're not going to really talk too much about that, but you've actually helped a lot of people too. I mean, you, you've had a lot of people who are in the same boat who are not seeing it, seeing their kids and, and, you know, the other parent has been given control and, oh my God, when a, when a toxic person has, con, you know, has the power of no, it just is devastating. I mean, so uh, how many people do you think you've actually talked off the ledge yourself through this just by being able to just give them some hope? I, I don't know. Um, Hundreds, thousands, probably tens of thousands now, I would guess, maybe even. I, I don't know. I don't think I've talked to tens of thousands, of, but I've, I've talked to a bunch. I don't recommend not editing out your own phone number when it goes out like that. Because <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it's sweet. It's kind that people call me, but sometimes I, I've, I've reached yeah. the point where I, I can only have so many friendship relationships with so many people. I can't keep up with some, some of them. Just, just, just so people, people under, well, I was going to say, would you, just so people understand. So in one of those early videos, when Caleb's channel was significantly smaller, you accidentally doxed yourself. So now your, your, your popular video that has millions upon millions of views, everybody knows your phone number, right? I mean, effectively is what happened. It, I did. I wouldn't say I ac it accidentally got recorded. I didn't accidentally publish it. I knew it was there. Right. It's called Parker vs. the Man. My darkest day, that's where my number was first revealed. And it was because my sister was being a sweetheart and trying to help Parker, you know, just on the fly. We knew we had just a couple of minutes to talk to him. He's trying to get him to learn how to do a collect call because yeah. he's moving away. And I'd already gotten so many comments and positive reinforcement from the Parker movie. Hey, for all you people criticizing that, you know, it's one sided and everything's edited out. He doesn't edit for 72 minutes. He didn't edit anything out. Not yeah. one single thing. It's start to finish 72 minutes. And I wanted to keep that because I thought that was very important for, because I've like any, everybody else I've seen edited videos and they're like, uh, it, it's really persuasive, but what happened between this edit and that one and this one and that one. And then, Come Parker versus the man, I'm freaking out because I was not by any stretch of the imagination anticipating him getting ripped away from me. I just whipped out the phone. And then yeah. Hillary's going on about talking to Parker and she gives out my number. And I'm like, <laughs> Billy, Billy, I, oh, I can't edit that out because people are going to think I'm like hiding something. I'm not hiding anything. And I debated for a couple of weeks for that reason and some other lawyer reasons whether or not to edit it out. And I finally just said, screw it. Go with it. I'll I'll just deal with it. Yeah, and I understand. I dealt with it, and it started blowing up, and it still blows up, but that's okay. I've learned to manage it. Yeah, I mean, just so people know, whenever whenever Caleb does lives and stuff now, um, you pivoted your channel to where you know when people are asking about what happened, it, you, you, the default answer is go look at the other videos. We're not talking about that. We're moving on. I mean, you you're you're really turning your channel into a. All right, I've gone through the fight. I'm out the other side. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've been taking some hits and some wounds, but you're picking yourself up and you're living your life. It's just, it's amazing. Well, well, thanks to you, I learned how to do these lives. I didn't know how to do it. I did Facebook 
back in the day, like when Blaine got arrested, my youngest son, that oh, was yeah, on Facebook. Those. Yeah. That was like one or two buttons, click, I'm live. And I just didn't know how to do it. But uh, what was the other part of that question? I'm sorry. I, oh, I just, I, I, <laughs> I think I lost my train of thought myself. No, but, I, uh, uh, no, we were just talking about how you're pivoting your channel to, uh, to what you're doing now. And, and no, not what oh, I was saying. Oh, that's what I was saying. I was saying that, that, you know, you, you're really showing the, the whole, the whole gamut of the darkest days. Well, to like right now, it's like your happiest days. I mean, and that's what I want to keep showing people. I, I don't, and I won't on my Facebook lives or anything or my YouTube lives keep talking about that same question. How's Parker? How's the kids? How's Parker? How's the kids? So I deliberately made a live about four months ago when we were talking about this called how's Parker? How are the kids? And if you want to know about that, you can simply go watch that because if I gave everybody the short answer, which is they're fine, which is truthful, nobody's going to be satisfied. So everybody. Asks oh yeah. Everyone fine. thinks you're lying or think, thinks it, I, I tell you, man, well, it, one of the craziest I, things is jumping on one of your lives is the amount you got people who really, you know, think you're the hero. And then you just have, well, you have trolls who are just trolling you. And then you just have some people who were saying some vile stuff. I mean, your, your moderators have to be 100% on, you know, I mean, hell, I was trying to help out the other day, just trying to knock some crap down. And it was like, holy cow, it's super fast and just crazy. Oh, that's right. I did make you a moderator. I, I totally forgot. Yeah, you are a moderator on that. <laughs> first one I made. I just don't see on there as much. Uh, Miss Mary um, and Becca and Wicca are my primary ones that are, bless their hearts, they show up almost every time. And it makes it so much more pleasant when they get, and people think, well, he's hiding something. He's a tyrant. He's yeah. since, and it's, yes, I am, but it's not for <laughs> the people you think. It's, I'm Venturing out the same. Okay, that's what I was going to finish saying. The short answer is they're fine. The long, detailed answer that was what everybody wants is already in the video. But if I kept saying, repeating that same answer, the long answer oh, over yeah. and over, that's I can't just individually spoon feed every single person that asked that same question. So that's why I made it that way. And I want to move on to other things and I want to show people look. You've seen the crap and the depression and the alcoholism that I went through. I don't know how I made it through, but I did it. And I've, I've talked about it. But now, look, I've got seagulls and manatees and dolphins oh, coming back porch. And that's what I want to talk about and show people. Don't give up. Don't off yourself. Because a lot of single parents, whether they're, you know, the military is infamous for having like 22 or 23 uh, suicides per day. And a lot of those people get that compounded because they go through the bullcrap family court system and they wind up committing suicide. And it's just, Oh, it just, it, it hurts to see that. So what I'm trying to do is, okay, you've watched me go through the trenches, but look, I made it. It didn't work out like I thought it was going to, but my children know who their dad is. They know I'm nuts. And they're like, sometimes the things I say and do, they're like, yep, that's my dad. I love the fart, but oh, dad, can you just tone it down just a little bit? And so I try to tone it down a little bit. The point is, <laughs> you know, their dad, they might have issues on all sorts of other things, but at least they don't have daddy issues, you know, or at least not traditional daddy issues. They at least know who I am. They Man, know that they can. That's the key, right? Up. I told London, sweet little girl, if you need me, I will sink this boat just to be there, just to make it there. If you need me, try not to let me have to sink the boat, but I'll do it. I'll, I will. <laughs> Call me. Or come see me. Even. That's even better. I think, I think, you know, that's the thing. You know, I, I talk to people a lot about picking your battles and stuff and and we were talking the other day about uh, last night. We were talking about people who martyr the, martyr themselves on this, and and you have to you have yeah. to have a path out of this. You know, you have to do the good fight and do everything you can, but you can't destroy yourself in the process. No, and, no, I I admire 
the martyrs that exist and there's a reason they're martyrs by definition there's not very many of them yeah because all wind up dead prematurely as honorable as their cause is don't be a martyr because more than likely if you wind up killing yourself like bless these hard these people get so frustrated set themselves on fire and kill oh. themselves and i understand their frustration they want to point out how bad but can anybody remember any of them? I mean, we know that happens, but I don't remember the names. I don't remember the names right now, but I remember reading the stories. But yeah, it's 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 sad. So my 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 shtick is to don't martyr yourself, take care of yourself. And sometimes yeah. that means you're going to miss some time with your kids, or you're going to miss out on a, a, a plethora of things. You have to take care of yourself. And back again, I keep talking about the alcoholism thing that is the one of the number one things that people turn to and i am happy to be living proof someone who drank myself to sleep every virtually every single night just to sleep i didn't go to bars i never liked yeah. bars i didn't want to hang but i knew you know if it's bedtime 10 o'clock start drinking about eight o'clock and hit me and just pass out and that's just what I did. I, and I, it was wrong and it will lead to a lot of health problems. I could tell I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And it was going, going to go down to where it, it was going to kill me. If I didn't yeah. quit, it's going to kill me. So all this work. What would, good, good would it be to have this cute, tiny, awesome little boat? If I don't have my health, I'd be yeah. dead. And so I decided I made up my mind and, I've got a video or two where I talk about, yes, yeah, one's called my drunkenness, my sobriety, where I talk about, you know, going through the DTs and coming out on the other side. And I, you know, I, I just, no, I, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's so hard when you're going through this, right? I mean, and, and the, you know, see, I mean, you're kind of at the end of it, or you at least, you, you know, you're, 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 and well, not, you're not really at the end of it. You still have stuff going on, but, but I mean, at the at the other side of it, it's so hard to even think that there's hope, right? I mean, I, I don't drink, right? I mean, I come from a family of alcoholics, uh, but there was a period of time where I was using NyQuil just to sleep because I couldn't sleep. And, you know, I mean, I was even con entertaining the idea. It's like, you know, well, I just was scared. I was, a, I was nervous that if I drank and did anything like that, that it would just ravel out of control. But I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, whenever you did your sobriety thing, are you, did you do it cold turkey or did you do a program or anything? Or you just basically said, I'm done. I, Man. I, 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 I don't like marijuana, but I used marijuana for about a week to yeah. get through the, the night sweats and the night terrors. And after that, it just, it, I, I learned, I figured out, like I said, I'm a, anti-drug war person i don't think anybody should be in jail or even harassed for ha if you like marijuana go ahead but it's just not my thing but i will credit marijuana for that's just what i use that's what worked for me for one yeah. solid week i decided to do that i didn't go to aa i'm glad aa exists i'm glad if that helps people get through it i'm glad it's there i just don't do well with talking to a bunch of strangers in a group that's just not my thing if that works for other people great but that's just not for me what worked you, for me was use marijuana and you, in you, texas you, that's that's like a cardinal sin oh is it i, no, I was just thinking I, I was laughing because you said you don't like to talk to people but you know you have four hundred thousand of your closest friends on your youtube channel <laughs> well i like social media i'm not gonna lie i i can yeah. talk to people but everybody i know what those, you're saying in real life, you're like, uh, Aunt Edna, I just want to get out of here, Aunt Edna. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And you can do that with social media. You're like, oh, yep, right. got to go. Battery's dead. You know. Gotta, yeah. Go water, That's funny. Water the, water the dolphins. <laughs> I have a, a Caleb. Our uh, Merge had another question for you, or it's just kind of a comment and a question. And it says, uh, uh, says for Caleb, uh, my advice on the boat. He's the one that has the boat in London or had the boat, is is to try and find community around you. I was very isolated at times in the middle of London on my boat. How are you enjoying the introspection of boat life? Oh, I 100% agree. You've got, to, you've got to have a community wherever you are. But in boating, yeah, especially because 
they say no man is an island. And I used to think that was kind of dumb thing to say, but it's true. I had an old man, coincidentally, from England there in the shipyard who oh yeah helped yeah he would he invited me over for dinner i stayed in the shipyard about three weeks scraping painting etc and he was giving me pointers you know if it wasn't for him i was gonna dunk my boat in as is with all the scale <gasps> things oh no <laughs> I, I didn't want to take the time i didn't want to spend any more money because i already blown my wad just getting it yeah there's that's right after i put it the very first layer of uh, bottom coat on He's the one that talked me into doing it. And he's, he got a scraper out and he said, watch this. And he started scraping and scraping and scraping. I thought, hey, you know, I've got a mechanical background. I can do that. Four and a half days later in a really sore back, I finally got it done. But in that time, I got invited to his, he's got an old catamaran and he's an old salt. He's an old sailor. He taught me about navigation and he would give me demonstrations. He showed me how to tie knots. And there's another guy there named Freddie. Freddie is the one that was helping me pass tools and, you know, helping me get the, 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 the air out of my diesel line. So I get the engine running. I have, you have to have community. You have to, it, 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 I am a solo sailor, even though I don't consider myself a sailor. I've got almost no experience, but I'm learning every single day. Um, there's a lot of things I do do myself. I like being a hermit. I've always been a hermit, but I like talking to people too. But I, I can I, like, like that, stay that close. That you can get that close to me, and <laughs> I don't want to, I want that many people that any closer than that. No, I hear you. I'm kind of the same way. I got another. So just so people know, so when you got your, it's, I didn't realize it was three weeks because I've been following you. I um, mean, you post your videos. I mean, you post stuff on Facebook, and you and you post videos on on. Well, I don't know if I've seen. I think you post community tabs on YouTube, but so this is, this is where you just finished painting it. And I mean, it looks good, man. Oh, right there. There is something so satisfying. Peel. I didn't paint the top. I only painted the bottom because the top, they call it the top sides. Yeah. Other than the splash, it never gets wet. The bottom oh. light blue. That's the part that's always in the water. That's the keel. And taking that paint, and just peeling it off and watching that crisp line down there. Oh my gosh. It was so satisfying because <laughs> I spent four and a half days scraping. And then I had to put four layers of barrier coat. And in between you got to let them dry because it's epoxy based and they don't need, it's anaerobic, but you can, yeah, you have to put it on layers and then you got to deal with the rain and then you got to put the, the, the blue coat on that's to keep the barnacles off they call it anti-fouling paint and finally finally you get to peel off those and you see that crisp line you're just like i did that i did that and i feel more comfortable and safe in my boat plus i lost probably five maybe ten pounds working your process. butt off <laughs> yeah working my gut off I, had to get, I got rid of some of that that's funny I, I, uh, I mean, I guess the weird, the weird part about a lot of this is, I mean, what was it? I'm trying to remember what was, was it seven or eight months ago? Whenever you, the uh, diesel mechanic industry decided, Hey, I think Caleb needs to retire without any benefits. I mean, you, you kind of just, yeah, that's why I call this my inglorious, my humiliating, my embarrassing retirement. <laughs> I embrace it because I gave 25 years of my life. And every single person I'd ever sub through, some might say, well, Caleb, maybe that's a reflection on you. If you don't really get along with every single person you've ever sub through, maybe there's something wrong with you. And maybe you're right. Maybe yeah. I just, maybe there's something wrong with me. And if that's the case, I'll accept it. But I would like to think that I was a good hand. Yes, I had my alcohol problems to go to sleep, but I never let it really interfere with my job. I didn't show up to location just slobbering ass drunk i didn't you know smuggle alcohol and like, drink on the job i waited till i got home because I, I didn't use it because i liked it i used it because it made me go to sleep you know what i was just thinking you know i mean because i mean i i, I mean I, I feel your positive energy now right my cheeks are hurting from smiling so much listening to your story but 
it just dawned on me that whenever I reached out, because you were telling, saying, mentioned before how I kind of encouraged you and helped you with some of the stuff on the YouTube thing. I remember watching that video when you were getting, you were moving out of your house, you'd gotten, or you're uh, basically evicted, and you got retired from the, you know, the 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 diesel mechanic thing. You that was you were pretty down back then. I mean, that wasn't that long ago. I mean, you were kind of like looking at it like everything had fallen apart, right? Well, yeah. Sorry, I got off. I got off topic a little bit. No, that's fine. I was down because I had sure I'd make mistakes like everybody else, but generally speaking, I was a good hand. I showed up. I did a good job. I know I was a good mechanic. I know I made whoever I was subbing through a lot of money, and. Maybe I'm just being petty, but I'm the way it ended, just all of Odessa in general, it just left a real sour, sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. Because, you know, you, I, a lot of these people have in real life, and is that wind too bad? I just have to sit down. Sorry. Oh, it's picking it up, yeah. Up. Anyways, I'd, I'd seen people go have these re- nice retirement parties, and, yeah. you know, hey, on 20 30 50 whatever number of years and i always thought well that would be nice that would be nice to talk to some of the old hands that i've worked with all those years but then i come to realize it is the oil field and the oil field is rough as rough can be and it's a wonder i even made it through because it beat me up i'm not gonna lie it beat the crap out of me well and i don't miss all i don't i hope i never ever ever see another drilling rig the rest of my pathetic life i just i'm done with it well you know i mean it's 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 tough right i mean you 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 go through you try to build something and it's like along every step of the way you're getting slapped down or i mean i even for me i mean i i had to step down from a position that i i worked my ass my butt off to try to get to and it's like when you go through this this it's it's like this machine that's just destined to it's destined to destroy you or it's destined to push you out the other side into something better, you know? I mean, but, uh, but I remember like, cause whenever we chatted, I mean, you know, and I'm like, Hey man, you know, try, try a couple of these other things you got, you know, I mean, Christ, I think whenever I was talking to you, weren't you at like 150,000 or right up to 200,000, right? I mean, you've doubled since then on your YouTube channel. So no, I mean, I, and I think that's God, I think that's so damn important because you know, you can take a moment in time that's down and, and well, you could almost give up. I mean, you, 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 whoops, a little bit of an echo. You could have, uh, easily just dove into alcoholism even more and just kind of just, I mean, really did some damage to your life, but God damn now. Sorry. I apologize. But now, I mean, you're on, you're watching dolphins. I mean, I saw that the other day on your thing. You had the dolphins in the background, just jumping around your boat. I mean, that is so cool. Well, yeah, the main thing that made me quit other than my health was it got to the point it was interfering with, you know, when the kids are little, they didn't really realize what was going on. No, nope. you know, I didn't drove around drunk driving the kids or anything. But when we got to the camper, yeah, I was having beers or whatever my flavor alcohol was at the time. They didn't really know about it. And as they got older, I re- I've seen, we've all seen those movies where the drunk shows up and everyone's like, ugh, ugh, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be that. And I can only imagine, if, if I thought that my children, any of them, especially London, because she's my only daughter, looked at me like, Dad, you're pathetic. I, I, I don't think I could handle that. And I, yeah. that was another thing that it would made it just a little bit easier or may may not easier, but more determined to get through the DTs and say, I'm not, I'm not going to be that person anymore. I'm not, I mean, I've got enough things, like I said earlier, that make my kids go, Oh, dad, for the love of God, dad, please. I've got enough just natural characteristics like that. I don't need to add being a slush drunk to that for the rest of my life. So I'm 43. Yeah. Hopefully I've got another 30, 40 years to go, statistically speaking. And, I don't want to be that. I didn't want to be that drunk guy. So I quit like cold Turkey. That's awesome. I've never looked back. I have another question for, from somebody for you from Alex. He says, uh, DST for Caleb, 
<clears throat> do you, st well, we already kind of addressed it, the still work or it, basically it was, do you still work or just income from YouTube? Uh, I mean, I know you've talked about that on your own channel, but so how are, how are you supporting yourself now? I am at the moment reliant on my YouTube channel. Fortunately, living in a boat, they charge me precisely zero dollars a day to anchor out here in this gorgeous. It's called Fish Fisher House Cove or something like that. Um, but it's funny how it worked out. A, a friend of mine that I've known on Facebook for years, like way before I really got into any kind of activism, he saw that I was moving to Florida. He happens to be a business owner. He happens to have a project down in Miami come uh, January. He happens to need a mechanic and he happens to be in a bind. And so he just happened to call me and I happened to pick up and happened to say, yes, I will go do that two to three week gig in Miami. Oh, the pain it'll be to get in my sailboat and sail to Miami to go to work as a mechanic installing these this filtration system. It's just going to be so difficult and it's going to pay relatively really, really well. And I don't have to have overhead as far as my field truck and all the, the crap that goes along with it. It just fell into my lap. And then he's got another one in Washington, D.C. to do in February. And I'm like, I didn't anticipate any of this coming when I left Texas and drove 18 hours to get to Florida. But wow, look what happened when I just quit worrying about how things are going to work. And I just go do my job, buy my boat, just start scraping because the old salt said I probably need to scrape it. And I listened to him and these things are just falling into my lap. So hopefully with that type of gig, that will be paying for Oh, do we need to, are we, no, we no, no. I, I just, uh, just everything oh. you were just saying, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll just jump in since for, for a second. One thing I've noticed in my, throughout my 50 years on this planet, and especially in this last part is once you make peace with, with your situation and you just kind of let go of the stress and the anger and the worry, it's like the doors open up. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, what you were just talking. It's a, I hear that over and over and over again. It's like, once you finally say, you know what, F it, I'm just going to, live my life. And now, I mean, you're doing what you want to do. And, and these opportunities are just basically falling at your feet. That's freaking amazing. It is. Uh, it is. That's why I've learned finally at age 43, just don't worry, be happy. Look the song, like literally don't worry, be happy. Bobby McFerrin nailed it all those years ago. Is it McFerrin, McFarland? I don't know. I remember, you know, what's funny about that song. I remember when it came out, I was, I think I was in high school. It was like what in the mid eighties or something. I hated that song. And I think the reason is, is because I was worrying and I wasn't happy and it just rubbed me the wrong way. But you're right that it is. I mean, it seems, I mean, and it did, it rubbed me the wrong way at the time, but you're right. Right now I think about it. It's like the secret of the universe right there. Just chill out, you know, and don't, don't let everything bring you down. And well, and the way I'm thinking about it, I'm about 120 miles North of Miami. 200 something like that who am i going to get to meet on my journey down there oh yeah and then who are the guys that i'm going to be working with that my friend that i've known all these years he obviously thought enough of them to hire them how what's going to come with those relationships i'm going to get to know those guys yeah who am I going to meet whenever i sail my little tiny slice of heaven all the way to washington dc in february who am I going to meet in Washington, D.C.? I don't know, but it doesn't matter because my little tiny boat's paid for. I only gave 11000 for it, and I don't you know, have a lot of expenses. Have you – I noticed for me, and I want to ask you this. I used to – let me put it this way. I used to worry about the future, right? And and then whenever the dark days of my, my family situation, it was even worse but I'm at the point now where I'm kind of excited about, I mean, what you just said is kind of a, even at a bigger level, but I'm excited about what tomorrow is, you know, what, what am I going to accomplish? Who am I going to meet? Who, you know, it's funny you say that because it, it completely pivots the way you, you view your life. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, there's an old saying, the world is my oyster. I know what they mean now. And I like literally the world is my oyster. Now my worry back then was, are my kids going to grow up not knowing who their dad is? Yeah. 
and ultimately that was my own i boiled everything down to it that was my only worry so that tells me that can't happen anymore because they're grown so yeah. why not be like you know don't worry be happy and just move on and do I, what it is i want to do and it just works out and at the if i remember what was it the, like didn't you have like a four hour drive one way for a while to go and see your kids back in you know a few years ago five and a half one way five and a half that's right i knew it was a long i mean and you were doing that i mean you were just brutalizing yourself right i mean you were just twice a month for almost three years yeah um, odessa to san antonio for almost three years and i never ever other than when that douchebag judge rex threw me in jail i and my rv was literally parked out in the parking lot of the courthouse and i was i had my dog loaded up all my kids toys and food he threw me in jail and i didn't get to show up my father had to drive my rv and park it at their house while i spent the weekend in jail and bailed out four days later but yeah. Those are those are the dark days that are they're gone and they're in the past. You made it through it. So on a on a better I'll question, survive. let's see. Let me flip this over here. Uh, I can't even say the name, but basically the question is: is how far do you want to take your boat? So where do you where do you want to ultimately? What, what's your vision of where you're going to actually sail to? At one point, I had a girlfriend in in England in Ipswich. For about two years and I wanted to go to England. Uh, a, England is between the third and fourth most popular country for my YouTube channel. So I know a lot of people there. I've just, I've talked to a lot of people there, but that's me crossing the Atlantic. And then that friend, not friend of mine, that, that fellow YouTuber, Louis Van Prague, the guy whose video I watched all those years ago, he's Australian. So obviously I wanted to go to Australia. I mean, it's Australia. I mean, come on. It's like, <laughs> it's down under. Exactly. Uh, I'd love to see New Zealand, uh, Thailand, all the, the, the Celtic countries, the, the Nordic countries, they call them. Um, I, I want to see, I'd love to see Iceland, believe it or not. I've got people, I've got, I had a, a person actually give a super chat to me back for, from, from Iceland and apparently the Icelandic currency is like a huge giant ratio. They sent me like, I don't remember like 15,000 Icelandic dollars or whatever. I was like, it caught me <laughs> off guard. I was live. I was like, did a millionaire just send me $25,000? And then it turned out it was like 15, 20 bucks, which is appreciated. <laughs> <I'm> wrong. But <laughs> I was like, just because of that, I think I want to go see Iceland. And that's going to be a whole new realm of sailing because there's a difference in sailing in this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous Florida climate. Oh, and yeah. Sailing. A lot of frozen but, stuff and polar bears. But your boat is made to do that, right? I mean, we were talking about that the other day. I mean, it's it's made for that. Yes, it is. It's so specifically made to withstand very, very, very large rough seas. It's got what they call a full keel. It, it's inefficient because it drags mm. because there's so much weight and mass down there. It's slow, but it cuts through the water. In fact, this is called a cutter rig. It oh, okay. literally, it, 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 you don't have to rely on your steering or your autopilot nearly as much because it, it likes to go in a straight line. So you get your bearing. Okay, Iceland's that way. Uh, 3,000 nautical miles, boom. It, it generally wants to just stay right straight and go for it. That's awesome. I want to pull up another picture that I think is just kind of like, uh, it's, it, I don't, I think you posted that on Facebook where you're just chilling out, feet up. That's your view, right? Is that where you're at right now? Um, it's Dwayne. I don't know. Can you still hold up one finger if you can still hear me clear? Okay. I can. Okay. You cut out. I'm assuming you asked me about the picture because you, you started pixelating like it was last night, but um, say, say your question. Let me see if it works. No, I was going to say, is that where you're at right now? Is this where, you, yeah. where you're where uh, you Yes, that is. That's, I took a picture of my honey white legs right there, 
if you can see behind me right there, that's the same. Hey, pile. it's There's the same view. The same view. <laughs> tree right there. The other, let's see, I think, uh, let me see if I can, whoops, I'm going to try to uh, pull up the next, because I think you had one with, yeah, there you go. That's you having dinner on your, on your, uh, what, what is that? Yeah. What do you, what do you... <laughs> that was me as one of your, 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 your question askers earlier about being efficient. That was me. That was last night or night before going through my ice box, finding everything that was got a little bit of fuzz on it. You kind of just scrape it off into the water. Everything that was about to go bad is all vegetables. I chopped it all up, threw it in a pan, put some, uh, sea salt and some coconut oil and some lime and salt and pepper and voila that's what i made that was my dinner i think i i, I calculate i think i had a whopping three dollars in that whole entire skillet and i ate it too oh speaking of that i think uh, i saw in your video the other day you made a comment you're like uh I don't get paid. I don't get my YouTube pay until Monday, so I'm anchored here and I'm staying here unless I run out of run out of food and water. I ain't moving till Monday. Is that still I'm a plan? Not, <laughs> I'm not Monday unless somebody kicks me out. If breaking some local edict that I don't know about, I don't think I am. I think they I've been here three nights now. They'd have told me by now, but I've got enough water and food to last at least two weeks. And I've got 40 bucks in my pocket and that's it until payday. Let me ask you this. Cause I, I, I mean, I, you know, I, everyone going through this, you, you know, you deal with money problems. Ha, have you ever had this little money and been this happy at the same time? Nope. <laughs> I've had lots of, I've had big time oil filled money. I had four or three or four employees back when I got divorced and rent and shop and over at 17,000 square feet of shop and field trucks. I had cash back then and I was miserable. And now I'm broke as a poor as a church mouse and I don't care. I mean, I'm not, I've, I've got my savings as far as my crypto. I encourage everybody, especially your listeners. I'm glad you brought that up. We won't talk about it extensively, but I found a little secret of hiding wealth and it's cryptocurrency, in particular Ethereum or Bitcoin. And that sounds crazy, but it's just look it up because you can literally buy these little th thumb drives from a, a, a website called Ledger. And as long as you know your password up here, you can hide in millions and millions and billions and billions and billions <laughs> of dollars in a little ledger in cryptocurrency. And you can hide it from these crooked family courts that all they care about is your money. They don't, obviously yeah. they've demonstrated they don't care about you being involved with your child. Or they wouldn't be putting good parents in jail. They want your money. And so fortunately I've managed to hold on to a little bit of my crypto. Not all I've lost. I had to sell a bunch of it back in the day, but I've got a little bit held on and cryptocurrency. Bitcoin just been setting all kinds of records. Like didn't it just, didn't it jump to like 22 or $23,000? last night yeah last night it jumped, in 24 hours it went from 19,000 to 23 almost four thousand dollars worth for one bitcoin one bitcoin but yeah. the cool thing about it is why the government's hated and, and i get so much flack from people and family courts hate it oh uh, well some of them they report to the irs they'll come get you but the, the cool thing is it's not like land with a title where they yeah. can physically around you it's not like a car it's a big heavy machine that's got some value that actually goes down in value it's a little ledger and just to be honest with you if i wanted to i could get, get on that island or the one next to it or the one past it or the one over here and go find a tiny little space that's waterproof and a little waterproof container and i could hide 50 million dollars if i really really wanted to i could hide it and nobody would know, no courts, they're done. They can threaten you with whatever. Yeah. You just don't say, say a word. So no, it's, a, it's so, that. no, it's so aggressive. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, what I'll do is I'll ask you this cause we're almost out of time. So what, what's the, for the final thought, what is the piece of advice you would have for somebody 
who's basically at the beginning stages of this, maybe they're, you know, they're just dealing with the restraining order and they're not seeing their kids and they're looking at it and thinking, Oh my God, I got 10 to 15 years left. What's, what would you tell them to, uh, to help them get to your point? Stay calm. Do not indulge. Do not resort to alcohol. Stay calm. Do not resort to alcohol. Show up every single time, except that you're going to lose physically, monetarily, speaking you're going to lose pretty much everything you've worked your butt off your entire life for be okay with it be there for your children make sure they know that who their mom dad whoever you happen to be make sure they know who you are when they're older they're going to go through some rough times my children and i's relationship it's not perfect we've had struggles there's they've got their own struggles and successes and that i don't go into anymore but make sure you they know that's all you can't put them back in the oven the best you can do is hope for a better life for your future for your kids and if they know who mom is if they know who dad is if you've done your part then that's all you can do so and hang in there because they will grow up and once they're grown they need to wipe their own butts and they need to make their own money and they need to get their own jobs and have their own responsibilities and you can't always bail them out I've struggled with uh, empty nest syndrome. I'm not going to lie. Oh, no, I think we lost him. Uh, to be honest, I'm surprised this worked as well. So on that, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And I hope you enjoyed that conversation. And I hope it gave you a little bit of hope. Hope that you can see that, you know, there is life after this. There really is. We Earlier this week, we had some callers who have been kind of in the same mode, you know, once you lose your hope, it, things get really dark. And finding your way back from that can be really tough. And on that, I also just want to say thank you to all the channel members who helped keep this going. Their names are scrolling across the screen. screen. Thank you so much for your support and, uh, and encouragement and financial support. It really means a lot. On that, guys, take care of yourself. Don't lose your hope. Have a vision for your future. And I will see you guys back here tomorrow.